What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and we're just doing a quick review and deep dive on the player of the weeks, the European Club Championships. Now this is actually a pretty decent pack if you're starting off, if you don't have a god squad or if you don't have a finished starting 11 and you're looking to strengthen. I think that there's some pretty decent players in here. Diaz is definitely the pick of them, Koundé is also a beast as well but I do feel it all depends on what other players that you have. Now I'm going to start with Rafael Leao because we did actually spin him on our other uh, uh, Road to Glory uh, profile. Can't even speak. But yeah, he's pretty decent, but I've never really got on with Rafael Leao. Like, it's just a player that I just find a little bit clunky. Even though he's got brilliant stats, brilliant skills, everything. Like, he's got double touch, he's got soul control. Obviously, you can't give him flip flaps, so he's not going to have the ball roll like his Showtime one or his big time one, but I do feel that this card is very decent for a creative playmaker, especially if you're playing him as a left mid, you can't give him attacking midfielder, that's the problem with these player of the weeks, you can't train him up, right? Let me just hide this a second here because I'll show you the positions as well, okay? But it's a very solid card, I don't think that it's kind of like an end game card, but it is pretty decent. The rest of the players here at the back, I've said this before and I'm probably going to end up saying it again, I don't really see the point in releasing cards like this, such as this guy, Nicholas Kuhn, from Celtic, I think if they're going to release in cards like this, they should go a little bit more, you know, extravagant. Like, why not give him 85 finishing and, you know, 90 acceleration, 90 balance and 90 type possession? The players that are going to be using these cards, they're not going to be, you know, top meta players. They're just not possible, right? Now, he's also got a face from Wish, so that obviously takes a couple of points off him as well. Double touch, flip flap and soul control from the rip, but he doesn't have one touch pass. He does have long range curler and outside curler and long range shooting, which is nice, first time shot. It's a decent card for a track back, but again, this is where I'd like to see the player of the weeks that aren't getting a many player of the week cards, right? So this guy might never get another player of the week card again. If you want to bring him to division one, you're fighting an uphill battle because you were probably sitting on a lot of better players on your bench. And I do feel that you should be able to train these up or have them at like really, really nice stats in certain key points, okay? Same with this guy here as a center back. Down as a destroyer, pretty decent, but again, you're going to have all the player skills there as well. He's got a player face, pretty decent, but again, that acceleration is going to kill him that it's not at 75 plus, and he doesn't actually crack 75 or 85 speed unless you're using one of the special managers, right? Same with Bissek here, who's another center back. He's a destroyer. He doesn't have a booster. He does have blocker area superiority and interception, but he doesn't have acrobatic clearance. So again, there's a kind of a risk and reward to using these players, especially when you're probably sitting on a lot of players by now that are better. Tillman, I actually spun this guy as well. He's okay as a box-to-box. -box. He's actually quite silky on the ball, but he can make the odd mistake. And he, he doesn't really have any defensive uh, capabilities either, right? And then Vanekin. So Vanekin obviously scored that penalty the other day against Aston Villa. Tyron Mings picked the ball up. He thought he was playing rugby. I don't know what he was at. Low pass is good. Ball control is good. But other than that, as a creative playmaker, he's just too slow. And he doesn't have the passing apart from low pass. He does have first time shot and one touch pass, which is nice. But he doesn't have weighted. He doesn't have low touch or low lofted. Um... He does have true passing, but he doesn't have weighted or low lofted. So that's a bit of an issue for me with any creative playmaker, right? I'm also going to throw in Jay in here, Kim Min Jay, right? Kim Min Jay. Kim is a good player, right? Now, we did spin him as well. The three spins that we got, I'll show you them in the other video that I'm going to be doing because I want to talk about Diaz, right? But um, this guy is a pretty decent card as well. He doesn't crack that 85 speed either, and that's kind of the threshold. So I think Konami are trying to keep a lot of these cards now under the kind of minimum of what a player needs to be, especially if you're looking for centre-backs, right? And also, I would say with Jan Oblak as well, is he worth holding on to? Yes, I was very, very surprised with how good Oblak is. He's definitely up there with a meta-style goalkeeper. If you don't have um, that many coins and you haven't spun for Schmeichel uh, or any of those guys, he pretty much has everything that you could possibly want, and he's going to have 90-plus in every single stat. The only thing that lets him down is probably his uh, goalkeeper reach and jumping, but you don't need it because he's such a presence in the goals, right? Now, let me talk about... We've already covered everybody, right? Let me talk about the top three, which is going to be Koundé, uh, Jokeres, and, of course, Luis Diaz, right? So I'm a bit disappointed with this card, lads, right? I Again, I, I kind of echo what I said two minutes ago with the Celtic player, right? I echo what I said. I think that if they're bringing out a card, unless they're going to be bringing a Showtime, which, hint, hint, they will be bringing a Showtime card of this guy. There's no doubt in my mind that they're going to give him the treatment, either bullet header or phenomenal finishing or a Showtime, right? There's no doubt in my mind because he's obviously a really hot property at the moment, okay? And he's probably going to get a big move next summer. But I just feel, why not actually just throw caution to the wind 
and just give him like a ridiculous build. Even just leave his stats as are, but give him like 95 kick and power and 95 finishing with 95 attacking awareness. Just make him like uh, kind of usable beyond just having to kind of use the same center forwards all the time, the meta guys, you know, that are 105 overall, excuse me. Um, but the rest of his, st his stats here, he doesn't have chip shot control. He does have outside curve, first time shot, acrobatic finish and area superiority and heading. It's a nice card. There's no doubt about it that it's a nice card, but I just think at 93 overall, especially after scoring that hat trick, he's been banging goals in. I think it's 16 goals in like 10 games or something or something like that. Somebody was saying in the stream earlier. I just feel like that this card's balance is an issue. However, in saying that, I'm going to show you why I think he's been given a secret buff in a video coming quite soon. Same with Kunde. A lot of people would be down a little bit on Jules Kunde. Kunde, who looks like the predator here, right? He is an absolute beast, right? Remember that movie? I'm watching all the Alien movies, lads. Alien and Predator movies. I'm on the fourth movie at the moment, but yeah. Um, he just reminds me of the hairstyle. But lofted pass, low pass, very nice. Obviously, he had a trio of assists the other day for Barcelona. Blocker, interception, aerial superiority. The only thing he doesn't have is acrobatic clearance, which is nice. And he can play CB as well. I do feel as if this card is pretty decent on an A rating. And I do feel that with the booster, he looks good too. He's going to have 90 plus speed, 90 plus defensive awareness, tackling aggression and defensive engagement, all pretty decent. Jumping and heading pretty decent as well with the passing. As an attacking fullback, he is difficult to get past. And then last but not least, we have the pick of him, Mini Romario, as I call him. Luis Diaz, right? Now, he's taller than Romario, but you know what I'm saying. This guy, lads, is a very, very nice card, right? I'm going to show you the stats I have with him. He's a super, super nice card and what he looks like in-game. Now, I'm going to be doing a dedicated video on Diaz as well. And I think that's just due to... He's just the perfect blend for a center forward. Now, we're playing with our road to glory here. I'm going to do a deep dive on Diaz because I definitely think he's one of the best player of the weeks that they've released in a long time, okay? But we are using Pep Guardiola here, who's just a standard non-booster manager, okay? So we are going to be getting the 80-18 playstyle proficiency, and this is his stats. He misses out on 90 kicking power and 90 finishing. But honestly, I don't think it's making a massive difference to this card. It just seems to be a little bit kind of like the only... I'll go into it in a deep dive, but that's what he looks like in-game. And you can see here that he's five matches played and 11 goals scored. Those are his skills. Double touch, soul control, first time shot, one touch pass. He has chip shot control. He's pinpoint crossing and outside curler if you want to play him on the left uh, wing. Acrobatic finishing. I was scoring goals for fun with this guy, man. He's a very, very nice card. I definitely think he's worked... If you spin for him and you do get Diaz, I definitely think he's worth using and training up. I Not training up, but using him and getting used to him. I thought his, he was a small bit clunky compared to using him the first game or two. Then I started to click how he was moving, how he was operating. I think his play style and how the card is built goes against his goal poacher. He doesn't act like a true goal poacher, but I do think that it's a very nice card. And it's a fun card. This is what Player of the Week should always be about. So he's my top pick. I will do a dedicated video on it, so keep it locked to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll chat you in the next one.